Hi, this is Mrs Sykes and we're going to have a look at some enzyme graphs today. Now it is very likely that you have come across similar shape graphs when we talk about photosynthesis as well. And that is very straightforward. Enzymes are required for photosynthesis to take place. So most of the reasons and most of the explanations provided during this video on enzymes are also relevant for photosynthesis. So in general, there are three different graphs that you need to be able to recognize and describe and explain to do with enzymes. Temperature, pH and concentration. Now, temperature and pH, as you can see really clearly, have optimum points. So they go up to a certain point and back down again, up to a certain point and back down. So for both temperature and for pH, they have an optimum level. And the optimum level is the pH or the temperature at which that particular enzyme works the best that it possibly can do. And this is the reason, for example, why we keep the body at 37 degrees Celsius and why we keep the pH in various different organs at a set level. If you have an enzyme working at its optimum temperature and its optimum pH, it works very quickly and very efficiently. For pH, if the pH is too low, remember that means acid if it's a low pH, or if the pH is too high, so that would be an alkali side, then your enzyme will not work. You will find that there are different versions of some enzymes in different parts of the body. So for example, if this particular enzyme has a optimum of pH 7, the version that would work in the stomach would have a optimum down here around pH 2, and its line would look more like that. They may well have exactly the same active site because they may work on the same chemical, but they'll work at different pHs. So for the pH graph, the optimum is the highest point, is the best pH for that version of that enzyme. And its optimum pH will match where it is in the body. So very acid around pH 2 would be the stomach. pH 7 is likely to be the mouth, where we've got amylase in the saliva. And if you're looking at something around pH 8, so slightly on the alkali side, that's probably going to be in the small intestine. For temperature, we have low rate of reaction getting faster and then going back down again. So it increases as we go up in temperature because of something called kinetic energy. The more kinetic energy there is, the faster we have substrate and enzyme colliding, the more reactions that we have. But after a point, there is so much heat that the enzyme itself, instead of being its usual characteristic shape, which would allow the substrate to fit in, it will denature and the active site will be lost and it will no longer be able to catalyze any reactions. So this is called denaturing. So for temperature and pH, there's an optimum level. Too far cold, too far hot, it doesn't work very well. Too far acid, too far alkali, it doesn't work very well. The final graph that you need to know about is concentration. Concentration is a little bit more complicated, but as a general rule, you would split this graph into two sections. In the first section, the more of whatever this is, the better the rate of reaction. So this is what we need. If we were talking about this in terms of photosynthesis, we would talk about this in terms of something called a limiting factor. So this is the thing that we need in order to go faster or to go better. And when we've got enough of whatever that is, it stays the same level. Now, this is one of the places where I see students make the same mistake every single time. This flat bit here does not mean that the reaction has stopped. It just means that it stopped getting faster. And if something stops getting faster, it means that it stays the same speed. So if you're in a car, you're accelerating up to 70 miles an hour on the motorway, and then you stay at 70 miles an hour. So this reaction is going very quickly, but it's not going any slower, and it's not going any faster. It is saying the same 
rate of reaction. Most of the time you will find that the optimum for pH, for temperature and concentration are around the same. So this is the optimum rate, this is the optimum rate and this is the highest point as well. So temperature, pH and concentration are needed to be kept the same or kept at a special rate called the optimum in order to make enzyme reactions work really well.